trailer. I had $200 in my pocket. I knew I had to get the hell out of there because my dreams were about to just vanish. And I found an old contact who was working out of a gym. And at that time I was in uh, love with fitness and I wanted to work in the fitness industry. So I was set to go down and work in that gym. And then wildfires broke out and mudslides covered the freeway. So I had no way to get there. So I actually reached out to another friend from high school and he picked me up in a small single engine Cessna, flew me in, went and met the owner of the gym. Welcome to the Gentleman Success, Happiness and Fulfillment Talk podcast, where we bring to you the most successful, happy, fulfilled gentlemen from around the world who have been able to conquer themselves, their life, their marriage and their businesses. You will be learning from four dimensional gentlemen who have cracked the code to the science of having it all. The question is, how can married entrepreneurs with kids become gentlemen, achieve true freedom, and build a successful, happy, and fulfilled life, marriage, and business? This show will give you the answer for that. My name is Alex Ramirez, and I'm your host, and you're welcome to the Gentleman Success, Happiness, Fulfillment Talk podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Gentleman Success, Happiness, and Fulfillment Talk podcast. As always, I have an amazing modern gentleman today with with us and i'm very excited to talk to him i'm very excited to learn from him i'm very excited to to get to connect with him and before i introduce him to you though i just want to give a big shout out to all of you who have been leaving comments reviews likes on all the major podcasting platforms apple google spotify and to those who have been watching on youtube as well and i just want to ask you for a favor really quick i want to ask you that if you get something out of this interview if you get some type of value some piece of knowledge and information that like completely changes your perspective or like the inspiration to go and take action. I want to ask you to share this interview with one friend since this is how we grow. This is how we share our message. And this is how we're able to motivate, inspire and bless other people. And while you do that, don't forget to comment the, the, your biggest takeaway and, and like, and uh, yeah, thank you very much. And today I have Sean Crane. Okay. He's life coach, speaker, best-selling author, He has an incredible story of perce perseverance and determination, and uh, he's been able to use his hardships and all the bad things that happened to him in his life as, uh, as, as like the driver for all of his success. But like this guy is amazing right now. Like if you go to his social media and everything that he's doing, he's amazing. But he wasn't always like this. At 23, Sean was sentenced to seven years of prison for a crime he didn't commit and um, with nothing positive to show up for his life until that point. Point, uh, with with a massive challenge ahead, you know, to go to go to prison to go to prison, um, he didn't give up, and he used that like while being in prison to, to like conquer himself, to find out who he was, to find out his purpose. His story is amazing, and then this this quote from his book: "In that cell, I started to create the life of my dreams that I am able to live today." So he started to create the life of his dreams, the life that he's able to live today from that cell while in prison. And he has an amazing story. So, Sean, thank you very much for being here, man. I really appreciate your time and you're welcome, man. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me, Alex. I'm excited to be here and to have this conversation with you. Awesome. So, man, the first thing that I do with my guests is uh, I tell them to walk us through their entrepreneurial journey in 75 seconds or less. Love it. So I was two months out of prison living in a trailer. I had $200 in my pocket. I knew I had to get the hell out of there because my dreams were about to just vanish. And I found an old contact who was working out of a gym. And at that time I was in uh, love with fitness and I wanted to work in the fitness industry. So I was set to go down and work in that gym and then wildfires broke out and mudslides covered the freeway. So I had no way to get there. So I actually reached out to another friend from high school and he picked me up in a small single engine Cessna, flew me in, went and met the owner of the gym, explained myself, who I was, what I had been through. He saw that desire in my eye to succeed and he gave me a shot. And I started working in that gym. And six months later, I left and started my own fitness company. And then six months after that, I scaled online and started my life coaching business that has now served men all around the world. Nice, simple, man. Sounds, sounds simple, right? Six months later, you started your own company. And then you scale it <laughs> and are now helping. People uh, well, you said 75 world. seconds. That could have been 75 minutes. Um, it was crazy though, man. You know, I just knew that I wanted to help people. And I knew that getting into a gym was that first step for me. So I literally got certified right when I got out, took me like two weeks, went there and started 
getting familiar with with the clients and working with them and getting a good reputation and, and building that reputation back in my city where I'm from as somebody who's here to help people, not not hurt people like I was portrayed as on the news, you know, and then uh, I knew I wanted to do my own thing. I didn't want to be an employee. So shortly after being at that gym, you know, I was working with my own clients and I was like my own boss, but I wasn't working for my own company. It was this other trainers. So I decided to leave and contract space out of other gyms throughout town. And that's when I was able to really grow my coaching business. And from there, I just continued on that path. Cool. Nice, man. So, so it sounds like you got out from prison, you know, like running or how do, how do you say that? You, you got out from prison, like you, you hit the yeah, ground like, running, right? Yeah. And with a lot of drive and motivation, right? So, so now, now that, that we have that, you know, that, that insight from you, you, you got out from prison and then all of a sudden you went off to create uh, this amazing business and to create the amazing life that you're currently living right now, which we haven't talked about, which we're going to get into, but now let's go back. Right. So like all of that drive and motivation after getting out of prison to hit the ground running, which led you to like build businesses and, 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 uh, and impact people, uh, bring me back, man. So was that, did that drive come from, you know, you being in prison? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, I, I spent my entire time of incarceration preparing for that moment when I got out. I had the vision. I knew what I wanted to do. And I was building myself up every day to feel confident to be able to go out and achieve it. Uh, this all stems from the feeling that I experienced when I first was incarcerated, which was an overwhelming sense of regret. So most people don't realize what they're going to experience when they look back in their life. They're, they don't. They haven't been there. I had the experience and the opportunity to feel what most people are going to feel when they're on their deathbed. I thought my life was over. I was 23. I was facing a life sentence and they were telling me that I was going to be locked up forever. And I looked back on the 23 years I just lived and I was ashamed and, and, and embarrassed knowing that I had not given my all to my life, knowing that I had taken things for granted. I had made excuses and I held back. And that led to me feeling the worst form of regret you could ever imagine, thinking it was all over. And that was literally the life that I lived. And that changed something, Alex, internally, the way I think, the way I feel, the, the person I am changed in that moment. And I saw how temporary and precious this journey is. You know, it could be gone in the blink of an eye. People say that, but they don't, they don't believe it. They don't live like it. They live like they have three lives to live, like they have another do-over, and they don't. And so my mission and purpose ever since that moment is to share what I felt with others so that they live their life differently, to help them avoid getting to the end, wishing they had a do over because they won't. Powerful, man. Powerful. So 23, you find yourself in prison, right? Uh, I have this, this really cool insight that I gained. I don't know when, but the first 20, no, normally for most men, for most people, the first 20 years of their life, they live, they live the, the first 20 years unconsciously, right? Like without intention like they don't they basically threw those first 20 years of their life away right uh, and it's not because of it's not your fault like that's just how we're brought that's how you, uh, that's just how we're like raised but then you're 20 right now you, you step into the, the real world you have a whole life behind you that you have to start taking seriously and let's say that we live until 80 right if if, if, if you get lucky if you take care of yourself until 80 so the first 20 are gone now you have 60 right we sleep for like one third of our days right so that's eight hours that are that are gone from those 60 years so those another 20 years are gone we're left for 40 if we go work for someone else we give them eight hours of a day that's another third of our day right so from those 20 years that we have left another 10 or 12 are gone so man we're left with about less than 10 years with about eight years to do something of ourselves for ourselves right to like leave this legacy or whatever to impact the world or whatever so you're here at 23 right like realizing with the realization that, holy shit, I've wasted my entire 20 years and now I'm in prison, right? With this feeling of regret. And, and, and then, and, and, and you said that that made you change, right? That, that, that cost something within. And then from there, you spent your whole time while you were in prison working on becoming who you are today. So can you bring me in into that, on that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I saw what was at stake. You know, and it changed my perspective uh, about myself and life. But I had so much to, to do as far as personal development and growth to accumulate, Alex. Uh, I mean, 23 years of neglecting myself, of making bad choices, of drinking, smoking, doing drugs, watching my life pass me by, um, of not dealing with the emotional 
uh, trauma and distress that I went through at home growing up. So that, that's where I had to start. First, it was realizing that I never again wanted to have that feeling. It didn't matter if I was going to be in prison for the rest of my life or get out in 10 years. I wanted to be someone I was proud of because when I thought about my 23 years, I couldn't find anything I was proud of. I couldn't find anything that I was truly proud of. And that shocked me. You know, I remember sitting there myself thinking, oh my gosh, I didn't do anything that I look back on and I'm proud of right now. This is horrible. So from that moment forward, I want to change that. Uh, so I knew I had to take action and I knew I had to create somebody that I was truly proud of. And that's what I started doing in my cell. I would just look for things to better myself, uh, ways to better myself. And this started with really small, almost trivial tasks of cleaning my cell with pride, reading books, writing letters back home, looking up words in a pocket dictionary, uh, working out with effort every day consistently. It was just this routine I started to develop. But what really helped me to get to that point was letting go of the past as well. I had to let go of the past because I was so consumed by it for all those years. And that's why I use drugs continuously to try to numb that pain. The way I did that was I actually sat down to write my, le uh, my parents' letters of forgiveness. I just had this thought one day that, okay, I'm going to be in prison for a while. You know, they're trying to send me to prison. They, I can't change that. And I don't want my parents to continue self-destructing because they were battling addiction. They were homeless. And I thought they were going to probably die while I was away. And it, it was really a painful thought. And I Damn. thought to myself, maybe if I write them letters forgiving them for the way that, you know, they self-destructed when I was younger, the kind of like the catalyst of me going down that dark path, maybe that will help them to, to not feel guilty about me being incarcerated. So I went through this process every day where I'd sit down and I'd write them. And I was like recounting memories from the past, talking about specific events that I was letting go of and how I was no longer upset about this and that and this and that. And I thought I was doing this for them. But what happened was I was experiencing this really like cathartic moment where these emotions were being purged for me, where I was getting emotional, where I was finally accepting the stuff that I had run from my entire life. And so I felt this huge weight lifted off my shoulders. I felt this inner peace start to come alive inside of me that I had lacked or, or this, you know, there was this void inside of me for 10 years. I hadn't felt this way in, in a long time. And I knew in that moment that I had released something that was really um, powerful, that had really held me down and suppressed me in life. And from that moment forward, I was no longer focused on the past. I didn't feel like I was anchored down by these resentments, but I was free to move forward towards a person I was proud of and create a life that I truly loved. And that's all I thought about every day. What can I do to better myself in this cell? How can I improve just 1%? You know, what can I do today to, to get 1% better and go to bed tonight feeling like I made this day count? And it didn't matter that I had very little to do. It was more about my intentions and effort. And so that's what I did every day for six to eight months while I was going back and forth to court, figuring out how much time in prison I was going to do. I was immersed in my routines. And in that stretch of time, six to eight months, my mindset massively transformed, my confidence grew, and I built momentum. So by the time I did go to prison, I was sentenced to those seven years. I was almost like a different person. I was on a mission. I was like a Navy SEAL behind enemy lines. You know, um, that was the mentality. I wasn't an inmate. That I wasn't a prisoner. I was somebody going through a life-changing transformation and that was my environment and I used it to my advantage. And every day I'd remind myself, this is a blessing. If I can overcome this, I can do anything in my life. Watch what I do in here. Watch what people are going to say about me one day. Watch how shocked they are when I get home and show them that this was an asset, not something that like ruined my life or, or you know, put me at a disadvantage. So that was the self-talk and daily motivation that um, made me or helped me to make those days in prison productive and honestly the most fulfilling and productive days of my life to that point holy shit man that's powerful man so did you actually like did you is it what you're telling me right now is like a is it a reflection of you like the current version of yourself looking back or did you actually have that mindset while you're going through that like that realization of this is happening for me like this is something that i'm going to use and it's a story that i'm going to be telling in the future did you have that mindset while you were going through that? Or is that a realization that you're having right now based on the person that you are right now? Yeah, that's a good question. And people ask me that a lot because they're almost in disbelief that I could have that mindset and perspective in yeah. such a dire set of circumstances. It was a really um, surreal experience, Alex. You know, when you think your life's over and, and you just find this like this fight inside of you to survive, um, you tap into some really special and powerful energy. So for me going through my life, I was a shadow of the person I could have been. 
I didn't play sports in high school. I didn't go to college. Uh, I wanted to be a professional athlete and I was capable, but I held myself back. And that led to the regret I felt. It demoralized me. I was, you know, I was just absolutely devastated. So I made the commitment to myself that I was going to fight every day to be my best self. And I felt like prison was giving me a reset. It was giving me a second chance where I could be removed from my old friends, from that environment that I grew up in, from the negative influences that I was surrounding myself with. And it was a chance to do things the right way. Even though I'm in this really extreme environment, it was what was going on up here that mattered most. It was my identity and the shift that took place. So I made a promise to myself that I was going to become the best version of myself I had ever been in everything I did from those moments forward. And the second promise I made was that I was going to be clean and sober for the rest of my life. And that was 10 years ago. I've been sober ever since. So I was thinking about how prison could be an opportunity to, um, to do those things, you know, and to be my own person and to really take control of my life. So that was the mindset early on. And I just felt that maybe I didn't understand why I was going to prison or, um, you know, at first it wasn't something I would have wished for, but I saw in the moment that if I embraced it and I, I made every day count that it could somehow some way benefit me. So that idea was just sparked early on. And then I continued to take actions that, that proved it to be true. You know what I mean? Like if I just had that thought and I didn't do anything, okay, great. That's just the thought, but it, there's no substance or there's no uh, grounding to it. Like it's not real. But when I had the thought that maybe this experience could somehow, some way benefit me and be a blessing for me. And then I chose not to use drugs and alcohol. And then I chose to get up every morning and do those workouts or look up words in my dictionary or read a book. Every day I did that that thought became now a belief. Now it became a reality. And then you fast forward thousands of days, 2007 days of doing this with this mentality. And I was literally like man manifesting that belief into an actual reality for myself over time. That's extremely powerful, man. Uh, so like, that's just like a testimony of how it really matters is who you believe yourself to be. Your, like the perspective that you think or, that you take around the things that are happening in, in, in your world in like your mindset right and when sean so you were saying right now that you know as a, growing up you, you you could have been an athlete like you were capable of like if you go to sean's instagram and by the way go follow him on, on instagram and on facebook like if you go to him you'll see like this guy has photos of him like without a shirt and he he he's capable he was capable right like right now and even even when you were young but um so not only like are you capable you look capable like you went through that you know you work you, you did all that mindset work uh so i mean man it sounds to me like i don't know like uh, how did you figure all of that out like was that uh did you get teach by someone uh was like that innate or or like yeah like you know like your mindset mastery your ability to ma to master your mindset and all that uh how, how did that go yeah i mean initially it was pure survival you know so if you're putting a really extreme environment, you have to adapt. You adapt or what? You perish, you die, right? Um, I really felt like it was life or death for me. And I had to adapt internally with my own mindset just to be able to get through the day and each moment, you know, because being locked up is hard enough. You miss your family, you're hungry, you're around people that you wouldn't normally associate with, you know, it's, it's loud, it smells like there's so many negative things. And I didn't want to feel like a victim or, or make things even worse than they were. And most people do in life, they have negative thoughts and they dwell on them and they project into the future. And they're, they're you know, really um, going through a tough time because they're doing it to themselves. They're defeating themselves with the way they're thinking. So I realized early on that I couldn't just get up and leave that cell. I didn't get to pick and choose what I ate. I didn't get to pick and choose when my family could see me, but I did have control over my thoughts and how they affected me and the way I was feeling. And I noticed that if I was able to center myself around gra gratitude every day and block out the negativity and the what ifs about the future, that I could still find some inner peace, even in that environment. And that was life changing for me because I realized that the guards, they couldn't take this peace from me. The judge, the DA, the cops, no one could take this from me. I was in control. So my thing is, I always wanted to be in control of how I felt every single day, despite what was happening to me. Right. And that was the beginning of me really. Sorry for the interruption. If you're an aspiring, established coach, course creator, author, and speaker, I want to extend an invitation to check out my free training on the podcast Cloak Track Framework by clicking on the link to the description of this podcast. On this training, you're going to learn how combining podcasting with a rare concept that very few people know about called 
The Club Track can help you build a multi-million dollar network of successful people who can become your clients, put you in front of hundreds of your ideal clients with your message, coaching courses, and books, help you become a best-selling author, get you booked to speak on stages, or even make an, an extra $237,600 in the next six months. Click on the link of the description of this podcast to learn about the four simple steps to make this work. Step number one is alignment. Aligning who you're trying to be, what you're trying to do, your goals and purpose with building your podcast so that podcasting is a vehicle to help you achieve your goals. Step number two is leveraging the cloak track to find an unlimited supplier of your ideal podcast guest. Step number three is leveraging the cloak track to close an interview with anyone, no matter how rich, famous, or out of your league they may seem. And step number four is the content machine, which is the key to tapping into other people's audiences. These are the four steps to making the podcast cloak track framework work, and I'm not going to hold anything back on this training. So click on the link in the description of this podcast, go and check it out. And once you've done that, if you feel like this would help, we also have a complimentary free, absolutely free alignment call to get you started and show you exactly how to implement everything. Get access to the training right now. And I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. Bye-bye. I'm -bye. taking back control of my life because the first 23, I was a victim and I was defeating myself every day by the way I was thinking because I was unconscious, right? Like you mentioned earlier, I didn't know I was doing it. So now I was locked in a cell with nothing but time to think and reflect. And I started seeing the truth and these answers in ways most people can't, you know, so it was survival, it was intuition. And it was, I was free of distractions. You know, most people out here are on their phones all day long, on their desktop all day long, talking to people all day long. They're always looking externally, but they don't realize all the answers to every problem they've ever had stems from an internal source. It's their intuition. You have the answers right now to all your problems. You're just not listening. You're not putting yourself in a place daily where you can tap into this information. For me, when I tapped into this information, I was blown away. You know, and I learned more about myself in those six months in the county jail where I lived in the cell for 24 hours a day. I learned more about myself in six months than I had in the first 24. And it completely revolutionized everything about me. You know, I found this intuition, this internal dialogue, this set of beliefs, this core identity that had been lost all those years. And when I found my true self and tapped back into that authentic version of who I was, it was game over. Like nothing was going to stop me. I was like, I found the truth. I'm going to do everything I can every day to embody this person, to better this person. I love this person. And I'm going to go out and share this energy and this person with the world. That was amazing. So, so you, while you were in prison, you tapped into your inner self. Yeah. You, you got connected with that higher higher self within you right you you were able to like not only change but control who you believe yourself to be and not be it like not have your identity be attached to being in prison right you're able to like uh control your perspective and make sure that it like it, 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 um you had a responsibility that was based on taking no a, a perspective that was based on responsibility so you took responsibility for what was happening and you realized that it was that it happened for you you worked on your mindset. You worked on like your core identity. You uh, you tapped into this very powerful thing, man. Right while you were in prison. So, so what? Is, how did that transfer into what you're doing right now? Right. So you you've done like fitness coaching, nutrition, mindset mastery. You got like data 2.0 going on. So like, can you talk to me to me a little bit about like what you're doing right now and like how everything that you that you've been talking about translated into what you do right now and what you do for people? Yeah. Yeah. So that was like the foundation, right? All that stuff that took place set the, set the stage for what I was able to do and accomplish in prison. In prison, I continued to educate myself. I was immersed in my personal development every day. Um, I actually ended up mentoring a lot of other guys because they saw the way I was conducting myself, my routines, my attitude, my mindset. And I was able to help a lot of people while I was in prison to change beliefs, change daily actions. And it, it sparked an idea and really uncovered my purpose. My purpose is to serve and help others. So before I even got out, I knew that I wanted to change lives. I knew that I had the ability to change lives and that because of my experience, I had something unique and valuable to share with other people that could help them. And so when I came home, I didn't know exactly what that was going to be like. I didn't know if I was going to go into counseling for at-risk adolescents and go back to college or if I was going to go into the fitness industry and run a gym one day. I didn't know. I just knew I wanted to help people. And then the opportunity to go work in that gym presented itself. And I just felt that was a stepping stone for me in the right direction, that it represented uh, a move forward in my life. So I quickly took action on that. I really didn't second guess. There was no sideways movements. It was straightforward. 
Um, and like I said, I worked in that gym for about six months, just getting comfortable being around people, um, growing, learning about the industry. And I felt capable after six months that I could run my own company. So I started my own fitness company and I, I had success. I, you know, I was getting more clients. I was getting great results for them. And at this time I was now engaged and uh, I had a daughter on the way and my stepson's 11. So I had a family to take care of. And this was always in the back of my head that, okay, this, this fitness business and what I'm doing is great, but I'm still not making the type of money I need to provide for my family. And I'm not impacting as many lives as I want. You know, I'm impacting dozens of lives. I want to impact hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of lives. That was the vision that came to me in prison. So I knew I just had to keep moving forward. Um, and so I, I did. When COVID hit and the gyms were shut down, I had already established some online coaching programs for people. But I knew that using uh, technology was the way, right? I could reach so many more people and impact so many more lives. And I knew that I was more than a fitness coach, man. You know, I mastered some serious demons up here in my time of incarceration. I could help people that were stressed out, that were overwhelmed, that had limiting beliefs and all these things that hold us back in life, fear, doubt, all this stuff. So I just created um, an online program. I just called it a life coaching program um, to, to develop self-mastery. And I started talking about my story more openly on social media and just being transparent about my time in prison and the things I did to take control of my life. And it really resonated with a lot of people. So about three years ago, that's when I started my um, life coaching business and it grew. And I've been able to coach men all throughout the country, even internationally. Uh, and so in that time, I just continued to better myself every day with the same routines and approach that I first formulated in prison. It's no different, man. It's the same approach out here. There's just new levels and new opportunities and bigger opportunities. So during that time, I had another baby. Now we have a family of three. Um, I wrote my book, Prison of Your Own, which became a bestseller last year. Um, talks all about my time of incarceration, what it's like to be charged for a crime you didn't commit and how I was able to overcome that and, and persevere. Uh, and then I've been able to speak and do TEDx um, and, and speak on stages at business conferences and leadership seminars. That's what I love. I love sharing my message on stage. Um, so those are the things I'm doing now. You know, we're building a home. Uh, I'm able to provide for my family and take care of them. It's everything that I dreamt of and more. And this is all possible, man. I trace it back to what I shared with you about that willingness to fight and persevere uh, over that, that challenge. When I was first in the county jail, that promise, those promises I made to myself, I'm still upholding them day to day now. And life has turned out really amazing. I'm very grateful, honestly. It's, yeah, it's crazy how, how, how like your, your, your worst struggles or your worst challenges or like the most painful things that you go through become the biggest source of blessings for you in the future. Right. Um, um, you, you have an incredible story, man. And like right now you're in a mission to help 1 billion people break free from their mental prison and become unstoppable. Um, you, you sound, you feel like uh, you, you, you feel, you sound pretty unstoppable. And even though you were in prison, right. Like you were free up here on, you know, with, on your, with your mind, you had a like free mind. A lot of people are free, but they're in a mental prison. So can you talk to me about, can you talk to me, like, how do you help people uh, break from their mental prison? And like, how are you planning to impact 1 billion people, man? Yeah, I love that. <clears throat> so when I came home, I couldn't believe how many people I saw who were just going through the motions and wasting their life. Nine out yeah. of 10 people are, unfortunately. And it's all because they don't believe in themselves and they don't really believe they're going to die. Like they think this is just a free ride and they don't know what's at stake. But all the while they gain weight, you know, they don't change their financial situation, their relationships deteriorate. And all of a sudden, why do you think people have midlife crisis? Because they realize, oh my gosh, I did it wrong. And now they think it's over, you know, and they just kind of give up. So I want to reach people before it's too late and help them to understand what's at stake, help them to start thinking differently and asking themselves different questions, you know, start to challenging certain beliefs and habits that aren't serving them. And to really admit that truth that they have within about who they want to be and then help them to develop the courage, the systems, the routines, and give them the push they need to start embodying that person and to create those outcomes over time. So, um, you know, we start with their mindset, their routines and habits, and we help them to align those things towards outcomes they actually want versus things they're settling for, right? Everyone's settling for security in their job so they know they have a paycheck, but they hate their job. Everyone's, you know, just settling for the dad bod, even though they look in the mirror and they hate the way they look and they're embarrassed to take their shirt off. 
Uh, people aren't giving as much love and affection in their relationships. They take people for granted. Like all these things, people are half-assing it in their life. And I, I can't stand that. So I want to share my story in a way that's compelling, but then also show these individuals, hey, I have a system that if you follow, it's going to transform the way you think, feel, and live your life. I turned the steps that I went through in prison to take control of my life into an actual coaching program from A to Z that's going to massively transform the way you feel and the results you get. Um, so the way I'm going to impact 1 billion lives, obviously, that's a massive number. And why wouldn't I pick a billion lives if I'm this confident in my process? If I'm this passionate about what I do, I'm going to set the bar as high as possible, right? So through social media, through books, through speaking on stage, reaching individuals who are currently incarcerated, reaching individuals who are incarcerated in their mindset, but free in the physical sense, and continue to grow and expand this message over time. That's amazing. And you know what? I'm also going to be impacting billions of people. Man, the fact that I just say that is 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 crazy. I mean, I think it's uh, it's crazy. Yeah. The fact that I just, I say that I'm also going to be helping billions of people become billions of men, become modern gentlemen. And uh, actually this year is focused on building a network of over, of over 500 high level modern gentlemen, high level entrepreneurs, just like you. Right. So, so far I'm about to hit 200 this year, 200 people on my podcast, you know, all of which I'm building connections with and a really, a, a nice relationship. And by the end of the year, I'm going to have 500. Right. And so far just Two, all of them, like like 80 people have said yes to go speak at my event. So pretty soon next year and then the, next, the year after that and then the year after, after that, I'm going to be throwing big events, man. I'm going, to be having, I'm going to be having big stages and I would love for you to come, man. Yeah, I love that, man. You got, you know, a, a really bright future because you already have the vision and you're so young and now it's just about executing and learning as you go. One of the, you know, and I'd love to be there and speak. That's my, my element. That's what I love doing. Um, and think about this, Alex. So you're 21, right? If you want to help a billion people, well, most people think, oh my gosh, how are you going to help a billion people? That's a lot. But if you help one man to change his, his financial future or to change his habits and routines, and he imparts that wisdom on his three children and his cousins, and they take it to their family and then their friends, and it expands and grows. That's how we're going to change the world. It's not just by changing 1 billion individual people. It's about changing the way a man shows up for his family so that his sons can tr change the way they parent and take care of their wives and their kids and so forth and so on. And that's what real leadership is. And that's why this type of growth mindset and personal development is so crucial because this is what is massively going to either elevate the quality of your life or detract from what you could have been and achieved. And I truly believe that. I mean, the only reason I'm having success now and able to live this life now is because I changed what was going on up here. And once I did, I saw a whole new, you know, land. I had a whole new lens in which I was able to view the world and it changed everything for me. Yeah. The ripple effect that you have when you, you know, are able to show up as the best version of yourself and change one life, the ripple effect from that man is unimaginable. Like we, we're not even aware of what we are really doing. Right. And you have a really novel, novel mission, man. Uh, you know, helping people like change what's up here, helping them realize that we're only going to be doing, going through this ride once. That's crazy to me. We're only going to be doing once, man. It's, it's crazy. It's scary, but it also fills me up with passion. And um, my stepdad, right? So like you, your system, right, right? Mindset, routines, habits, sounds really clear, like something that I implement, which is uh, everyone wants money, right? Money means results. Results physically, emotionally, sentimentally, financially. And if you want results, you got to get four things right. Mindset, map, motion, measure, money, right? Mindset is about your mindset, who you believe yourself to be, the beliefs, the map, right? Having that, that map of where you are, where you're going and who you must become. The habits that you got to uh, put in place in order for you to become that person that will get you to wherever it is that you want to go. And then measure, tracking and, you know, in gratitude and, and reflecting and all of that. And, uh, you know, your system sounds pretty, pretty similar. And, and right now, man, the reason I'm saying this is because my stepdad is 45 years of age and, and he's like, oh man, it's painful. You know, like you said, he lived his life without knowing how life is really supposed to be lived. Right. And, and like right now he's like done. He feels done. He's 45, man. He feels done, you know, overweight. Uh, he's struggling with like uh, a lot of health issues, like I don't, I don't even know what the health issues that he has, has, because I'm not even familiar with health issues, but like, well, the real problem is his mindset, man. 
And, uh, and I would love to help him, but I can't because he doesn't see me as equal. You know, he sees me as the kid that he raised, right? And, and, and uh, I'm just trying to him, I'm just trying to get him to invest in himself because I could, I could buy him a program. I could, I could buy him your program or whatever, but he won't use it. And, and it's really sad because he won't invest in himself. He doesn't think that he's worth two, $3,000, $5,000, whatever it is, uh, to invest in himself and change his life. And it's, uh, and like what you're doing, like what we're doing, right. It's like very noble. Like imagine if you would, you could be able to come into this, this man's person, this man's life and change the way he thinks and transform every single area of his life. That's, that's powerful, man. That has like, it's, he doesn't understand that that literally has no price. You can, you cannot put a price tag on that. Yeah, you're absolutely right, man. And like the older generations, they don't see the value in it. Um, they have a lot of belief systems that are um, detrimental, really, and, and limiting to what they can do and experience in life. So we're breaking that cycle, though. You know, you call it the modern gentleman, right? That's what it's all about. Uh, it's it's the next level for for us as leaders and what we can do to impact people's lives. And so you say you, you said you're um, speaking on stage is your element, right? Like uh, how like, what, what do you say that? I just, you know, I feel it in my heart, man. Uh, I remember when I was incarcerated and I just had this feeling where I wanted to, to speak. I just had this thing where I knew it was uh, like, I was scared to get up in front of people and speak. And it was something that made me nervous and anxious. And I just took it on as a challenge. I didn't want to feel that way. I wanted to have complete mastery over my emotions and how I was feeling. Uh, so at that time I was incarcerated and I was in a drug program and you had to get up behind this podium in front of all these inmates covered in tattoos, mean looking guys, no <laughs> one's smiling, no one's giving you any type of feedback. And you had to speak and share your story. And uh, it was not pleasant. The first time I did it, my face got red, my voice was quivering, my palms were sweaty, and I was a mess. And I went and sat back down. And I remember I just made a mental note to myself that I'm going to conquer public speaking. And uh, that was just the initial reason why. And then when I got to another prison, well, let me back step. So then I was working as an inmate counselor in that drug program for the next year. And I got to facilitate lessons, speak in front of people, and I got more comfortable. And I realized, okay, speaking is a, a powerful tool. Like if I have knowledge and um, something I want to impart on you and teach you, if I can articulate it the right way, I can really help you. If I know how to use words to, to my advantage, um, I can get what I want. I can um, help you to, to take action that you otherwise wouldn't. And I can use it as a a catalyst. So when I got to another prison, they had Toastmasters, which is an international organization out here all throughout the world that facilitates public speaking skills. They teach you body language, tonality, um, just cadence, all these different things related to speaking. And I took that self-help group and I would memorize and practice speeches. And I just remember feeling like, man, when I get out one day, I'd love to get on stage and share my story and change lives. And that vision became a reality. I got selected for a TED talk, I've been asked to come speak at different business events and entrepreneur events. And I just feel like that's what in my heart I want to be doing what I love to do. Man, I, I relate so much to you because I feel that in my heart as well. Right. Even though like three years ago, I couldn't speak more than three words in English without choking myself because, you know, I'm Mexican and, and, and I, I didn't never learn how to speak English until like when I started working on myself intentionally. But I see myself and like I have like three vision boards around my house, like big vision boards. And all of them have like stages and, and like me, you know, speaking in front of the thousands of people. And that's what I see myself doing. And that's, and it's crazy to see myself doing that because like, I never got, it, it wasn't like nobody told me that it's just, I just feel it. Right. I just feel it inside. Like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is what I'm meant for. And I relate so much to you, man, because like your energy feels like a new soul. Right. So I learned this concept, uh, a couple of, months ago about like new soul stuck soul and old soul right like old souls are like they're like grounded they're like like wise right like their energy is just different stuck stuck souls souls that have been living for a long time but have been have gone through like very tough times and they've been able they haven't been able to get out of those tough times in all of their lives there's like stuck souls and then new souls so i feel like i'm a, a new soul so like i just i'm just like limitless and that's how you feel to me and I just like, I don't know, like I, I resonate with you, not with your story, but like with you. So I just wanted to mention that, man. And uh, 
we have about 10 minutes. Uh, we, we're almost out of time. And I want to, I always end my, my uh, interviews with five questions. So uh, can I go ahead and ask you the first one? Yeah, go for it. Awesome. So uh, let's see. If you could give your 20 year old self some advice, man, not redo your life or change anything, just give your 20 year old self some advice. What would you say? Wow, I love these questions. Um, it's hard. Yeah, sometimes it's hard for me to answer that type of question because I know that we have to go through stuff to really learn what we need to learn in life to make changes. So I tell my 20 year old self, uh, just never quit. Never forget who you want to be deep down in your heart. You're going to go through tough times. You're going to get beat down by life sometimes. Don't ever quit or give up on that person in your heart you want to be. Mm, yeah, yeah. But that deep down, you know, because you know, like not you, but like whoever is listening, you know, right? But there's just, you, you mentioned it right now, uh, intuition. There's just a lot of distractions. There's just a lot of like things going on, you know, like robbing us from, from finding us who we, finding who we really are. There's a lot of things that are that are robbing us from that. So, and this is not part of the questions of the five questions that I ask, man. But if you could give someone some advice to like really find themselves, to really get in tune with who they are, right? To like start listening to that thing going on inside of them. Yeah. What would you like? What, what advice do you have for that, man? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, get up an hour before you have to talk to anyone or do anything. Don't look at your phone. No electronics. Do what I do. Go sit on your couch in the living room. If you want to sip a little coffee, go for it. I literally sit there and sip coffee for five to 10 minutes and just see what I'm feeling. Pay attention to that internal dialogue. I acknowledge it. I personally like to meditate every morning because it helps me just to look deeper within myself. Um, so I'll put on some like tranquil music on YouTube. Um, and then I, I, I go into breathing and just meditate. And then I journal. Journaling is a way that you can keep a relationship with yourself and, and start to understand maybe distorted perceptions, limiting beliefs, things that are holding you back. Sometimes it comes out in your writing. So give yourself an hour in the morning and you can just sit there and do nothing if you want, but these things help you to look within yourself. And, and that's what self-discovery is. Also going out on walks, maybe midday or in the evening, like again, no phone, no distractions, getting that blood flow. Uh, it helps you to, to tap into some intuition that a lot of times people are ignorant to. So Give yourself solitude and privacy every day to, to connect with and learn about yourself. And it will enhance the quality of your life. I promise you that. Extremely powerful. I was hoping that you were saying that you were going to say that because in the morning I spent like an hour and 15 minutes just for myself, man, uh, to like meditate, to like journal, uh, to communicate with myself. That's how I think it happens. Like it's like a process that you don't really know what it is. But you start to get in tune with who you are. You start to getting, you start to get to know yourself. You start to, you know, I add it to my vision. I have like this thing that I go through every single morning to like brainwash myself into believing that I'm capable of all the things that I want. Um, and I, you know, I add it to it and I just spend like an hour and 15 minutes to myself every single day in the morning. And the only reason why an entrepreneur would not do that, man, is because they feel like they're wasting time, which they have it completely wrong, right? Like, which is, it's, it's nuts because Like if, if you get your internal game right, like the external world is going to like fall into place faster than you, than you could ever imagine, faster than, than, uh, than you could get it to fall into place by you working hard, right? So like that's what that, what, what that one hour is for, right? To get the internal game on track, on point, so that the external, all the external game falls into place pretty simple and easy, right? Absolutely. You're 100% accurate there, man. So, all right. Awesome. And so let's see, the, the next question is around mindset. What is one mindset shift that you've had that you can share uh, that you think has contributed to your success? Um, every morning when I wake up, I train my mind to think and focus only on the good in my life, because it's really easy to let negative thoughts uh, derail you. And if you're having negative thoughts, they're going to lead to negative emotions and they're going to compromise your actions for the day. So when I was in prison, I'd wake up to four cement walls. And a small little cell that literally I could reach out and touch both walls at the same time. And I noticed that if I didn't immediately focus on gratitude and what I, what I had going for me in my life, then my whole day was just a struggle. And I felt like I was being tortured in that cell, thinking about the future and the worst case possible scenarios or dwelling on the past and the things I didn't do right. So every day I would focus on the fact that I'm alive, that I'm breathing, that I have eyes. I get to see colors. Like if I was blind, all I would want back were my eyes. Right. Well, I had legs also. 
if I didn't have those legs to use, I would give anything just to be able to run and jump and have one more day to use my legs. So I started thinking like that, right? And then when I was like taking action, I'd be thinking about my arms that allow me to do push-ups, my letters that I'm writing. I have people back home that love me, that want to hear from me. And it was just this constant process of focusing on the positive versus the negative. I was aware of the negative, but I wasn't focused on it. I wasn't fixated on it because then I was going to lose control over how I was feeling and I would lose the day. So if you can train your mind to think about all the good in your life from the moment you open your eyes, just the fact that you're alive is a blessing. Like you wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't not want to wake up. Right. Or if you woke up paralyzed or if you woke up and you know, you were sick or you woke up and had something going bad for you. Like you wish you would just be back to how you were before. Right. So that for me was life changing and continues to help me in my life today. Gratitude and positive perspective. You, you were on Bradley's show, right? And one of the things that Bradley's always shares is that, you know, you, you're like crying from, you're like whining for money because you don't have money. Um, what if I gave you $10 million right now and you, but you, but you couldn't get to wake up tomorrow. Would you take it? No. Right. So like waking up is more valuable than like $10 million or even a hundred million dollars or whatever. So, um, so, so then gratitude, gratitude and a positive perspective every single day. And that's extremely powerful, like, because gratitude is a superpower that most people don't realize it is like gratitude is a superpower that you can use to just change your perspective and make everything go well. Right. Um, yeah. I don't know how to explain it, man, but gratitude is yeah, a it's impossible. It's impossible to experience depression, anxiety, be angry, be upset. If you're truly grateful, it blocks out all of those negative emotions. And everyone wants to feel what? Happy, fulfilled, motivated. If you want to feel those things instead of the negative emotions, you focus on gratitude. And gratitude naturally creates that energy within you. And you're going to live a better life because of that. There you go. I couldn't have said it better. So gratitude is the fastest path there. And um, scarcity, you know, fear, anxiety can't live where gratitude lives. Yeah. Right. So um, the next question, mindset map. So what is a tactic strategy or like tool or piece of advice that you could give someone who wants more clarity in their life? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. A couple of things. I have my clients uh, write down what they ideally want their life to be like in 10 years from now. Like if they could write it on paper, the more detail you put in, the, the more that those things are going to come to life for you. What would you put? Where are you living? What are your relationships like? What's your health like? What's your financial situation like? I want to know what your ideal day is like. Like, what's your truth? Not what you think is possible or realistic. What do you want? Okay. Um, it's really important to get clear uh, about what you want. And then I literally have them write what I call their legacy letter. What are people going to say about you at your funeral or your celebration of life? What are the contributions you made to society, your family? What are the major accomplishments that you had? What were you going to be remembered by? What were those memories that you forged with people? Like, what are they going to be talking about? And when they put this in writing, you got to use different parts of your brain, multiple regions of your brain simultaneously. And by putting it in writing and then speaking it out loud, it becomes something that's tangible and seems more real to them than just these hidden thoughts below the surface that come and go every so often. Now it's something real and tangible. Um, so that's, that's the first step in what I call vision creation to help them really get focused and clear on what do they actually want in their life going forward. Super powerful, man. So remember the thing that I told you that I go through every single morning, it's called achievement mental pathway programming. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I, I like wash my brain to believe to, you know, get me everything that I want. I go through like my vision board, my 90 day letter, my yearly bullseye, my tenure, what I want for it, like my life, uh, my Wikipedia page, you call it something a little bit different, but it's almost, you know, like the same Wikipedia page. So like I have a little, literally like a Wikipedia page in which, uh, like if someone in 10 years from now or whatever goes to Wikipedia or Google and types Alexandridis, you know, like the first thing that pops up is Wikipedia. And I, I literally have written down everything that, that I'm going to be remembered for. And then I also have my obituary. So like these things are real. They're not like they're not just like, I don't know, it's the things that are like woo woo or something. Right. Like this stuff is powerful. So uh, thanks for that, man. Mindset yeah. map motion. What is a habit that you have? That you think has contributed to your success? Exercise. Cool. Awesome. 100%. Number one, I mean, exercise is such a powerful tool to build uh, confidence in yourself, um, you know, to, to break through negative thoughts or limiting beliefs about yourself. Um, 
it's one of the quickest ways that you can change your internal state. If you're having a bad day and you go move your body, you can quickly shift from low vibration to high vibration and, and positive thoughts and attitude. Uh, there's just a host of benefits. So by far, uh, exercise. And you mentioned right now that when you get the blood flowing, you tap into like, you know, a, a part of your intuition that you wouldn't otherwise without exercise, right? So that's another yeah. benefit. So when I go out and run, I run almost every morning. Um, I always get creative ideas. All my content, all of my speeches, uh, a lot of my book was all derived from, from that time where I'm running and my blood's flowing and there's no distractions. I'm just in the moment and my, my subconscious is coming to life. That's what's happening. I'm tapping into thoughts and ideas that are there. I'm just not aware of them. I literally come home and I put all this stuff down on paper and take action on it, whether it's filming content that day, whether it's a new speech I want to write, it all comes to me in my morning uh, routine and my run specifically. It's, it's, it's so powerful. It's changed my life. Amazing. Uh, mind to map motion measure. What do you think about measuring and tracking? I think it's really important because a lot of times we can do good, but if you want to do great, you want to know the numbers and track so that you can see where you need to improve. Um, you know, it, it's very important. If you don't know the numbers and you're not tracking your finances, you're, you're not tracking your macros, you're not uh, keeping track of your daily, like non-negotiable actions that are aligned to your vision and, mm. and your goals, uh, you're probably not going to be as efficient and you still might do well, but you're not going to do as good as you would if you just simply tracked them and kept yourself accountable. Amazing, man. Man, I've had a blast, man. I really enjoyed this. One of my favorites, definitely. Um, and I don't always say that. And, uh, you know, I just love what you're all about. And if anyone out, out there loved what Sean Crane is all about, where should they go to learn more from you and just to like watch your content or just get around you? Yeah, I'm, I'm on um, Facebook, Instagram, um, my website. It's all under Sean Michael Crane. So if you type in Sean Michael Crane on any social media platform, I'll pop up. If you have questions you want to reach out, don't, don't hesitate to message me. Uh, love to get feedback from people or, or anything like that, make connections. Awesome, brother. And um, man, my podcast has changed my life, you know, from interviewing over seven, over like 80 high level men like you, my, the biggest benefit that I've had, apart from the opportunities to speak on stage and money that, you know, I've been able to make and all of that. Apart from that, um, the, the biggest benefit from building this network has been my change in my identity. Every time I get on, a, on an interview like this, you know, I get to talk to men like you, I'm able to like, hold a mirror in front of me, right? And I'm able to see all of the good things that I have and all of the things that I have yet to develop. So, so um, I'm very grateful for like this podcast and I have a, I have a training. I'm going to put down a, a link just for the Sean Crane episode that is going to take anyone who wants to like, like me, you know, build a network of people who are ahead of them. Uh, and it's going to take them on an A to Z training on how to start, grow, launch, monetize, and automate a million dollar network building podcast. So, I'm going to throw that in as well, just for the Sean Crane episode link. And uh, thank you, man. I really enjoyed this. Yeah, thanks, Alex. I enjoyed talking to you, man. And uh, excited to see where you're going in your future. You got a bright future. So keep up the good work, man. Thanks, brother. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching the Gentleman Success, Happiness, and Fulfillment Talk podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with one friend, leave us a comment, and let us know. 99% of people never leave a review or comment, but we love and are very thankful with the 1% of you who do. If there's something or someone you want to see on this podcast, send me a message on Instagram at Alex underscore Ramirez 1020 and let me know. I say thank you for that. I have an amazing surprise for each and every one of you who does take the time to leave us a comment or review on YouTube or one of the major podcasting platforms 